Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also good morning. So today I wanted to go ahead and share my thoughts of my level 100 Righteous Fire Chieftain in the Necropolis League. Um, by far of all the leagues I've played, most deaths, like not even close. Probably say on average in softcore, I die between 5 and 15 times getting to 100. Really depends on if it's my league starter, how much I'm really pursuing bossing, etc. This go around, I would say where majority of my deaths accrued were... I'd say like the first maybe like five were pushing red map completion day one with chaos damage mods, but I'm not chaos capped. Then I would say a large amount of the deaths were due to the juicing strategies I was deploying, which was basically the Harbinger Beyond setup, where when, you're, when your PC is at like one frame per second and there's just 500 mobs on your screen, unless you have like basically a, an automatic recovery setup where you have say... Defiance of Destiny or block with life gate on block that will keep you alive. Other than that, you see you later. But nonetheless, very, very fun. Uh, and then the other majority of the deaths would probably, I would say, come from T17 progression. Uh, attempting to clear T17s like day three of the league probably had like 15 deaths there. And the other parts were just like fun. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and talk about that. So on our kills here, we've killed 1.4 million monsters. And for people who want to screenshot this, this is all the currency I picked up on the way to level 100, basically. Uh, I put this on, I think, day one of the league, maybe day two, so it's pretty accurate on what I picked up leveling to 100. With that being said, today we're not talking about juicing strategies, although I will be doing a new Rogue Exile strategy that I saw on Ziz's stream, called, uh, I named it here, Happy Exiles. But we're not talking about that right now. We're going to talk about my character, where I can go from here. A lot of people are asking me, where to go on the higher budget versions. So I'm gonna go ahead and explain everything I would do to upgrade my character from here. So weapon, uh, weapon is a big a big one here. Instead of going for this weapon right here, if you guys are familiar with my website, I'm just gonna plug it right now because it actually has the upgrade for this. On my RF Wikipedia here under the crafting tab, if we go to the end game rune dagger, do note that if there are stuff, on, things on here that talk about veiled chaos, I would ignore the veiled chaos part I didn't get around to getting everything perfect uh, for the crafting, although the FAQ is 100% up to date. So the end game rune dagger here, if you look at the crafting outcome, it has a double plus one with a double dot multi with an increase. So this is our end game weapon. The reason we go for uh, daggers over scepters is it is deterministic to craft the plus ones. The uh, scepters are not. It's like one in nine or something. It's very, very bad. So this is your like, 20 divine weapon if you want to go bigger your next upgrade is like a 200 divine scepter so this is pretty much where most players are going to end the reason this is so important is that plus two makes the purity of fire 23 without putting it in my rise of the phoenix which means i can now target a physical damage taken as x element rise of the phoenix which would put me close to 80 percent conversion all i'd have to do is get a proper roll taste of hate and i would have over 80 percent physical damage taken as for people who are curious where those sources are, in the POB notes, I have it explained, but I can also just do some quick math for you guys. Cloak of Flame is 40%. 40 plus the Fizz taken as Chaos here. Remember, optional, and you need to be Chaos Cap for this. 40 plus 10 makes 50. 50 plus 8 on my Helmet makes 58. 58 plus the 12 on my Taste of Hate makes 70. So 70, if this was 15%, uh, this would be 73. And then with a Corrupted Rise of the Phoenix, this would actually go to 81 uh, if I wanted to boost the 81 even higher, I could use a Watcher's Eye for um, physical damage taken as fire while active with Purity of Fire. That would push me into the 90s. And to go from 90 to basically 100, you don't want to go past 100 because I think there's like an overflow bug. I could use a Lethal Pride, but let's not talk about that. All right, next up, Helmet. Um, the reason my RF is not in my Helmet is I hate Conk Effect. The only time I use Conk Effect on my Helmet with RF is when I have a triple helm, so that would be like Conk, Burning, and more Ellie. So a big thing for me now would probably be buying Essence of Horror once the market fixes and trying to craft a more Ellie burn damage helmet. Once I do that, I will target a corrupted body armor. So again, looking for basically a better helmet. After I get the better helmet, I will usually make the swap, but making the swap to the helmet also would want me to have Awakened Burn Damage 5. And the reason I say this is this is gonna be used for Fire Trap. This gem is key for your fire trap swap because not only does it give it 39% more burning, it also gives plus one, which is an insane link. So once I get a better helmet and I target a corrupted cloak of flame, that is when I will go for the pivot on the fire trap. 
Do note that when you do the Cloak of Flame swap, it's going to be, you're aiming for six off color. So it's three red and three green. You can look in the POB for more info. To do that, I will use the currency I farm from beyond to actually color my cloak. So first I will corrupt it. If I like the corruption, I will use Tainted Chromes to get my outcome. Tainted Chromes do not respect the attribute requirement. So it is completely random. So hitting six off color does not really matter. Okay, uh, Amulet, obvious choice here would be Defiance of Destiny. If you don't want a Defiance of Destiny because you just want more raw damage, there are deterministic ways kind of similar to the weapon to make a plus one plus one dot multi amulet. So I would go look at that. I don't have that posted. But you can Google around to find it. Shield, I was kind of explaining what I would like. Uh, I would like to have a Fizz taken as X element shield. You could go for a crafted shield, although I don't know how expensive it would be. You could try to go for a like three max fire res fracture and just make some insane unethical damage shield. Um, and then you would have to fish for the two extra max res. The other thing you could do is if you have a mage blood, you technically get nine extra max res. So if I had a mage blood, I would probably replace my Rise of the Phoenix with maybe like a Dawnbreaker. Or, or you could look into a transcendent swap, but I'm not going to really go into that now. That's if I farm a mage blood. I'll talk more about it. Uh, overall, I'm pretty happy with my rings. The only thing I don't like about this ring is it has a 54 strength roll, which is actually okay. The reason I bring up the strength roll is remember any extra stats can just be swapped onto tattoos. What I would prefer is if it had an int roll because these, these int nodes here can actually be tattooed with a reduced effect of shock and reduced crit damage taken. Reduced crit damage taken is a prominent stat for the type of maps I'm running that have just insane crit stats on them. So that is one nice thing. As for how I crafted this ring, I basically bought a fractured dot multi ring Sorry, I bought a Fractured Fire Res Ring. I actually went over to this Harvest Bench and I did Reforge Chaos, which is the yellow one here. Um, this one right here. I hit T1 Chaos. Then I basically Exalt Slammed T1 Strength. And then I used Veiled Chaos for Suffixes Cannot Be Changed. Uh, there's a cheaper way to do Suffixes Cannot Be Changed. It's a bestiary. I don't remember the name, so I do apologize. Someone in chat will probably say it uh, in the comments. Um, and then that's when you unveil the life roll and then I crafted Leo's increased damage. You can apply that to making your other ring. It's just more expensive than lastly because Veiled Chaos or whatever they called now Veiled Orbs are sadly much more expensive. I think they're like two divines. Oh, they're three divines. They're just four. They're massively going up in price. So Betrayal is really up there right now with currency generation. Uh, right ring is also pretty good, no complaints there. The fire res is nice because it helps overcap my res for uh, the really rippy maps that I'm running. Okay, Annihilation's approach, nothing to really be said here. The only thing to do is really target them and corrupt them. Are they still pretty expensive? There are six to find, so I don't plan on corrupting those anytime soon. Gloves, uh, overall pretty happy with my gloves. The only thing I would really like to do is unveil maybe plus gems because if i unveil plus aoe i could move auras here as well uh another thing i could do about them oh, i hate that noise another thing i could do with my gloves is if i had a natural life roll so that would typically be acquired either unveiling or by exalt slamming life then i could craft uh increased damage during any flask effect that's effectively like that's like two points on the passive tree worth of damage that's a very decent damage node so new gloves are definitely going to be in, in the future. I also would like to replace that suffix of life regen right here with probably dexterity. That dexterity would allow me to drop this amulet for a defiance of destiny without having to change anything. And then, of course, belt. Uh, we did actually drop a headhunter. Uh, it was pretty cool, although we double corrupted it and it did not survive the double corruption chamber. So now it just sits here as a skin over the <laughs> immortal flesh. Uh, Immortal Flesh, easiest upgrade. I mean, I hate to say it. You go from a 1C belt to like a 200 Divine belt. You can go from Immortal Flesh to Mage Blood. There are a lot of, it, it, not a lot, there are some substitutions in between, like using a, uh, oh God, what is it called? Darkness and Throne. You can go Darkness and Throne with Abyssal Jewels. You'll get overall less net recovery, but you will gain damage because you could get like damage over time while holding a shield. You can get your Shock Avoidance there, Attributes, Flat Life. It's okay, but overall, you are trading a ton of sustain for it. Okay, let's talk about the passive tree. So in my super endgame setups, I fish for a jewel here called the Adorn. This is typically like 40 divines or so. Uh, according to this, it's actually way cheaper. Is that actually true? Because I bought mine for like 35 divine. If that's actually, wait, is that real? 
Oh, no, that's not real. I want a 129. Okay, yeah, they're about the same price. They're like in the 30 divine range. So the reason this jewel is so strong is look at my HP here when I take the jewel off. What this jewel does is it makes it so your magic jewels have insane effectiveness. So we drop all of our rare jewels and pivot into magic jewels. And I like to go for 7% fire multi and 7% life. If you look in the POB notes, it will explain a little bit more on the breakpoint on Adorned. Um, one of the big things I need to do is get a double, so basically getting a triple notable cluster. I like having Prismatic Heart here, and then my second favorite here is probably Burning Bright just for AoE. So I could have basically Burning Brights on all of them. That's an extra 8% AoE, so 8, 16, 24, um, and then another 8, 16, 24. I think I can still do a double setup here. One of the big things with Adorn is actually dropping life nodes. Life nodes are not as important when you have Adorn giving you a bunch of percent increased life. So one of the big ones here is actually, I think maybe dropping out of here or starting to drop out of any two point life nodes that are not necessary and then pathing into the triple cluster located down here. This will get me two extra jewels, which would be pretty nice. I might also potentially think about doing an extra aura setup, but that's in for another time. I'm not going to worry about that. I think that pretty much covers where I want to go with the character. Um, I don't think there's really anything else off the top of my head. I, I think that pretty much covers everything. So I hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Remember, if you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. For the first time in a long time, I'm actually going to be playing this character post level 100. Usually I stop, but uh, with my uh, Rogue Exile strat here, we're going to be aiming to fish for a Defiance of Destiny drop. So pretty excited to see. I don't know what that noise is, but we're ending here anyway. So hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. I'll catch you guys all tomorrow. Take care. Have a wonderful time, everybody.